Hello all and welcome to a collection video and today I'm going through my Xbox 360 collection one year on from when I made a video titled my Xbox 360 collection as it stands April 2019 going for the full set now back then I had around about the 90 game mark and today I'm going to be showing you 410 so we've amassed quite a bit since so you're going to be seeing everything that I now have in the collection and yes we're going to start basically from the beginning i've alphabetized it in a manner that suits me and obviously we start with numbers over letters so we've got a couple of numbers right at the beginning we've got 007 legends pick this up in a charity shop it says exclusive 007 pack content now that is all in there but there is the lottery of will it, will it or won't it work i haven't got round to that and i've also got 007 quantum of solace too now i did have 007 bloodstone as well sadly i put it in the system because i wanted to play it and it didn't work so that's left the collection and now needs to be re-added obviously fifa games 10 a penny but world cup ones were dated and had the years first so that's where they get alphabetized as such and we've got the 2014 fifa world cup in brazil one there next up adventure time the secret of the nameless kingdom now i've heard of the adventure time franchise but never watched any of it never played a game of any of it either so looking forward to playing that one actually because the art style in that looks absolutely fantastic next up afro samurai now i bought this from cex for not a lot of money and i was really looking forward to playing it and one of the reasons why it is features samuel L. jackson so it's got his voice in it and I thought even if it's a bad game, that would be quite funny. It was quite funny and it's not an awful game, but I just had issues with the camera angles in it and it made it a tough play for me. So I ended up kind of stopping with it and I haven't gone back to it since. Fantastic game here though, especially if you like your shmups, your side-scrolling shooters, Akai Katana, highly recommend this one. This is fantastic. It is very bullet hell like but it's an absolutely blinding game. Get a lot of gamer score out of that quite easily, but then there's about another three to 400, which is absolutely rock hard. So be prepared for a challenge there if you want the completion. Next up, my first face out game, Alan Wake needs no explanation. Only on Xbox 360 exclusive there. Fantastic. There you go, psychological action thriller. Now this one is face out because I bought two of these units side by side. And that is basically because I worked out that Two units combined together would hold 798 games. Yes, 19 of these spine out in one gap will fit and then 10 with one face out will fit so because i've got two of these units and empty shelves look a little bit unsightly i use this idea which i've seen in many collection videos of having one face out and you can fit 10 in a section with one face out like this i think it just looks a nice and a lot smarter it looks nice and a lot smarter so i've done that and obviously it's great to see front cover artwork because it obviously doesn't generally get displayed and uh, at some point sadly everything will be spying out for me <laughs> let's go back to spying out though aliens colonial marines the much maligned aliens colonial marines still haven't got around to trying this but i really like the cover artwork on this one so it was almost tempting to have that one facing forward game that's 10 a penny see it everywhere Aliens versus Predator. Love Aliens and Predator. So, yeah, I was always going to purchase that one. Alone in the Dark had for ages not got round to playing it yet. Next up, we've got a section which is full because I've had to do this in some sections now. Obviously, my top row has got other stuff in it, but at the moment, it's full of other stuff to just basically fill it again, make it not look unsightly. But these units are going to be full of Xbox 360 one day when I get that far ahead. I'm hoping the fact that I've got 410 and if it's 798, I'm safe for at least a year. Obviously, the more I get, the harder it's going to be finding a new game. So hopefully, I'll slow down a bit because I will need a third one of these in the near future once upon a time sort of thing. Apache Aerosol is the next one up that looks a lot of fun that does look a lot of fun haven't got around to trying that one yet let's have a look at a bit of the back artwork there yes that does look a lot of fun so got to get around to trying that army of two games these are 10 a penny you'll find these everywhere for 50p and a pound so we've got army of two there and we've also got army of two the 40th day is that something like that ashes cricket just found a good copy of this in a charity shop for 50p with complete with manual in absolutely really nice condition so pick that up to get that off the list next up we've got assassin's creed games and i'm going to be absolutely honest with you i still have yet to this day to play an assassin's creed game there's one just because these games i don't know what it is about they just don't jump out and appeal to me to get cracking on with them straight away because of the stealth like nature i'm more of a guns blazing kind of person when it comes to playing games so yes there was two and obviously we've got three as well 
We've got Revelations here too, but I'm just going to bring this one up here because this was an interesting piece which I bought off eBay. I didn't actually know it existed and I only paid like two quid for it and it was sealed, but I have opened it since. That is because it's got three games in it. It's got Assassin's Creed 3, Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag and Assassin's Creed Liberation, but Assassin's Creed Liberation is a DLC code. So the fact that this was sealed, I will know that work, but I pre-opened this just so that I can actually show you what's inside this one because I thought it was a little bit interesting in the way everything was laid out because normally when you have multiple discs they put them all on one side and put a flap in the middle but it's got four discs you've got two there like that i'm not going to lift the manual for but you've got two there on the other side behind that manual as well and obviously you've got your manual and your dlc code there for the liberation game as well okay next up what have we got here we've got ballers chosen one could categorize this under nba ballers but because if I was looking for this game, I would think I want to play Ballers Chosen One. I'd go for straight for B. So that is why that one's there. Obviously, it's going to be a little bit different from your standard NBA releases by the look of it. But I haven't played it, so I don't know. But the only music game which I haven't played with my guitar, which it will work for, is the Band Hero game. The track list on this is really good. So I'm going to hold it up. And if you really want to read the track list, you can pause it here. Ones that jump out to me there are Evanescence, Bring Me to Life. Absolutely adore that song. And the two songs by No Doubt as well. So that one I really need to crack on with. I've played all the other Guitar Hero games which work with the original guitar. We'll get onto that in a minute. Banjo-Kazooie game, Nuts and Bolts. This one does say only on Xbox as well on it. And then we've got two Batman games. Well, we've got two of the Batman games. We've got Arkham Silent. These are both fantastic games. And then we've got Arkham City with a nice lenticular cover there. I love a lenticular cover. I'm sure a lot of other people do too. Battlefield games. Battlefield 3 limited edition. That was part of a bundle. Battlefield 4. That was picked up in game for 99p, I remember. As was Battlefield Hardline at the same time. Charity Shop Find was Battleship. I think I paid £2.99 for that in fantastic condition with everything in it. So I thought it was worth it. And then Battle Stations Midway as well. Cherry Shop 50p, promotional copy not for resale, sadly, so that will get changed and updated at some point. Game which I need to finish, which is fantastic, got a fantastic soundtrack in it as well. Uh, Bayonetta, again, Bayonetta needs no explanation at all. Obligatory Olympics game there, Beijing 2008. 50p purchase from CEX, Beowulf the game. And then we got this, I bought this off eBay because I hadn't seen this about, and I do love a compilation box set. So you've got Bioshock and then the Elder Scrolls 4 Oblivion in the same box as well, which is a nice touch. And talking of Bioshock, if I can get it out without dropping it, here's the Bioshock Steelbook. And that is an absolutely gorgeous, fantastic looking steelbook, I think. I really do like that. And then in the middle, face out in this section is Bioshock 2, just because I love the foil cover of it. I love the creepiness of the little girl over the shoulder and the foilness of the sort of the light in the middle of the helmet there as these here fall forwards. Next up, we've got what have we got? Black Sight. This is bought for a quid in CX. Again, I just hadn't seen it around. Now I see it around all the time. I think it's sort of a sequel to Area 51. But yeah, only quid in CEX that. And uh, you can't get no cheaper than this, I think. This oh no wrong one. This was I think was 50p in CX. I'm getting it mixed up with another game which we'll get to when we get to the letter D. Uh, next up, I nearly paid too much for this at the London Game Market because I hadn't seen it before, and then it turned up in a charity shop for 99p. So I was quite glad, and also it was overpriced in the London Game Market. I learned probably why I left it behind. Two Blaze Blue games, Calamity Trigger. Do love my fighters and Continuum Shift. Now, Continuum Shift was bought in a CEX as well for not a lot of money, complete with manual as well, which was I was very pleased about. I have played this and it's all right, but there's something about the style of fighting in this game that just didn't kind of connect with me as such. So I don't like it as much as other franchises, but I know it has a good solid fan base and it is a decent fighter, so I won't malign it at all. Next up, Blazing Angels, Squadrons of War different game that and then we've got blood bowl there as well that was gifted to me by a friend quite pleased to have that one looks like mutant football league might even be something to do with it don't know next up fantastic game this is blur i call it mario kart with real cars it is absolutely a fantastic game you can pick up three power ups at once and cycle between them as you're racing to as to which one you want to shoot and if you pick up a power-up and you want to make space for another one and you don't want to use that power-up, you can actually drop it as well. But where you drop it, it stays on the track and someone else can pick it up. It's a cool, cool little sort of strategy sort of addition to the game as such when you think of it like that. But an absolutely fantastic game and I implore anybody to play it. Games that need no 
no explanation here. Borderlands, put hours into this first one. Absolutely love it. And this turned up in an eBay lot, and I thought it was an interesting piece. To me, DLC on a disc sold separately is always an interesting piece. And to me, this was absolutely fascinating to see this. So one of many things in that eBay lot that was made that eBay lot such a deal. In fact, one game certainly did. I will get to that when I get to the Gs. Borderlands 2, haven't played this on my console, but I remember playing a lot two-player of this with a mate. So I need to bung it in my console and basically get some of the achievements again. Great game, Borderlands, and great game, Borderlands 2. Both of them brilliant. And yet to still play Borderlands 3. Brink. This is a 50p game that is 10 a penny, is absolutely everywhere. In fact, you could probably pick it up for 10p nowadays, to be honest with you. Uh, next up, Brothers in Arms Hell's Highway. This again was bought from a London game market uh, at store that said every game here, one pound. So I hadn't got it, so I added that to the collection. Now, before we carry on going on sideways, I have this little section here up the top, which is basically a shrine to my favourite gaming franchise of all time. So I just need to add the fact that I have got Gears of War 1, 2, and three and judgment but because i'm such an avid fan of the franchise i do want to collect all forms of box art so as well as having like the original there i've now got the greens classic i've got the gray border classic as well and i've also got this really cool double pack which has gears of war and gears of war 2 in it as well and then next here i'm not gonna pull them all out he says i've got gears of war 2 and then we've got the game of the year edition here next to it as well don't see that around as often as all the other versions of it. Uh, a different kind of classics there, sort of with a grey block on the spine, as I call it. And then we've got Gears of War 3, Judgment, so one game's there. Got the limited edition of Gears of War 2 over there. And over here, that is actually the Japanese or the NTSCJ version of the limited edition of the first Gears of War. And yet, I haven't got the PAL. Uh, right up at the very top here, obviously, it doesn't fit anywhere else. That is the Gears of War 3 limited edition. That turned up for an absolute steal at CX for a tenner. And I say it was an absolute steal because I asked them to check if everything was in there. Everything was in there, and it was an absolute near mint condition. It's absolutely fantastic. That was a real good turn up for me. Okay, back down to the blocks. Let's go here. We have under B still, Brutal Legend. Yet to get around a trying that and yet i've heard a lot of good things about it bullet storm was bought for very cheap and the thing that appealed to me here was the fact it had this gears of war 3 beta invitation included symbol on it so it had something to do with gears on it so i bought it straight away this is bought bought part of one of my cx challenges again yet to get around to that it gets slated a lot but apparently it's not that bad uh, next up, Bully Scholarship Edition. Fantastic game. Put hours into this. Got the full 1000G. Again, I'm one of those people that one day hopes that they will do a Bully 2. This was one of the very early purchases for me as well. Just absolutely, again, I'm fascinated by compilations. And I wanted to play a Burnout game on the 360. So that's why I got that. And then Chewy Pursuit there below. So that's going to have a bunch of easy achievements in it, I would imagine. In fact, I've got about half of them. I really need to return to that at some point. Next up, the Call of Duties begin. And the only Call of Duty I've not played is this one. But this turned up in a cash concepts for not a lot of money. It was like something silly, like 30p or something. And the disc is in there as well. There's a disc in there for, I forget what it is, free multiplayer maps and bonus DVD. So that bonus DVD is in there. It's like in a paper sleeve on the manual side. And that's how it was actually sold. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 4. Don't need to say a lot about that one. Played a lot of that. Call of Duty Black Ops. This is the one I have facing forward. And I must admit, I love this cover. There's something mysterious about the guy on there. And I just think it's a really, really interesting cover, actually. So I really like that. And then we've got, obviously, we've got Black Ops 2 there. That cover art's all right as well. Ghost, which I didn't really like. This was kind of the beginning of the end for me in getting excited about Call of Duty. Getting excited about buying Call of Duties when they came out. And that was probably the last one that I did get. But we've got Modern Warfare 2. I love the cover. Do you know what? They're actually, the covers on these aren't actually that bad. I like that one too. That one was facing forward once upon a time. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. Call of Duty World at War, which I have started the veteran campaign on and still need to finish. This is a lovely slipcase which was gifted to me by a friend. Call of Juarez, the cartel. A game that turned up with a bundle lot I bought on Spot, which I just never knew about or existed and still haven't got around to trying yet, so I can't really comment on it. Carrier Command, Gaia Mission. This I've played and got the full 1000G because it's part of Games with Gold, but it turned up cheap on a Facebook Marketplace deal, so I added that. Another beautiful steelbook. Now, this turned up in CEX, and when I pulled off the shelf, it had nothing in it. So I asked if all this stuff was in it here, that, you know, that contains the image of all art book, and if it is, I will buy it. And the, the book is in fantastic condition. It was there, and so is the steel case, steel book. It's absolutely great condition. Okay, some Command & Conquer games. Command & Conquer, Kane's Wrath. Command & Conquer, three... 
Tiberian Wars. And then we've got this one here, Command & Conquer Red Alert 3, which has a reversible cover. You can make out the reversible cover behind the cover of the disc and manual there. Uh, funnily enough, that cover is exactly what appears on the manual behind it. So that is a fantastic little, little uh, extra sort of within the game there for you. So let's pop that back. So let's scan back across the top row. And then we'll drop down to row number two. Right, row number two. We've got Condemned. I like my horror games. I really should get around to playing this. This will get updated because it's in a classics box. I don't really like it. Another FPS. I mean, the 360 had tons of them. Conflict Denied Ops. Create. This is an unusual looking game. Um, yet to try it out as well. It, yeah, I, I don't know what to say about it. I need to look into that one. I don't know anything about it, so... Yeah, do need to look into that. Right, facing forward is Crisis 2. And then next to it, we have Crisis 3 as well. Nice cover arts on those as well. That's why I choose to have that full. And that was the limited edition, so there's a little bit of foil going on there too. I've yet to get the first Crisis game, and I want to play them in order. So when I get the first one, I will get round to 2 and 3 afterwards. But I just need to get the first one. CSI. There's a couple of these games. I had more of them, but it was uh, they were in the days when I didn't collect and didn't keep hold of games. So those went, but this one managed to survive because I hadn't got around to playing it. And then I did, and I've kept it. These are awful, to be honest with you. They were designed for a PC, and I must admit, the 1000G is, is easy with a guide. I can't only stress with a guide, but not that great. Right, we have Damnation. That was gifted to me too. Nice little mysterious guy with a gun on the front there. Game quite simply called Dark. Games are going everywhere. It's the pitfalls of doing it like this. Well, I'll just leave that like that for now. Sort it out in a bit. Next up, Dark Void. This I saw this front cover and I, I sort of very much reminded me of The Rocketeer, the film from the 90s. And to be honest with you, he's like that. It's a guy with a jetpack which shoots guns out of it. Not a bad game. It's only 50p, so it's worth picking up if you do find it out about. Not a bad game, just gets very samey. And some of the things you have to do get very grindy towards the end, I found. Okay, Dead Island. I put hours into this. I really enjoyed this. I love the crafting of the weapons and such like that. So much so that I played the remake on the Xbox One. Absolutely loved it. Which really means I should get around to playing Dead Island Riptide, but I haven't yet. Uh, next up, Dead or Alive 4. Again, a big fan of beat-em-ups. Liking the Dead of Dead or Alive franchise. This one was an only on Xbox, as you'll see at the top. So, again, it's in a classic. So we'd like to upgrade that at some point. This game is an absolute ton of fun. We have Deadpool. And I must admit, more fourth wall breaks than any other game that you, that you can imagine. A lot of fun, this one. Again, spent many an hour playing this and, and just really enjoying it. Next up, Dead Rising. That's a promotional bundle copy and he's changing. And, of course, we've got Dead Rising 2 as well. And, of course, we've got Dead Rising to off the record need to get re get around to digging some time into some of those next up series i've played very recently dead space dead space 2 now i've played and finished both of those i have started but only got about a couple of hours into it dead space 3 as well dead space 1 and 2 are fantastic games i think 2 is a slightly better game uh, but the first one has better atmospherics. That was what a friend said to me, and I totally agree with him. Dead Space 3 had a slow start, but after that slow start is over, it's now getting good, so I'm really enjoying it. Death Smiles Deluxe Edition, another fantastic shmup that is a bullet hell. It's extremely like Akai Katana. So if you like Akai Katana, you will like this. I did. I would probably sway towards Akai Katana slightly as the better of the two, but they are still both fantastic. This is a game I was thinking of earlier when I said this was really cheap. This was the 20p game 20p game from game, so can't turn down a 20p game at all, really. Uh, next up, I have played a little bit of this. Didn't really like it. It's basically rappers fighting sort of in a, a little bit of an open arena environment and you can use the environment to sort of throw your opponent into speakers and stuff like that. But yeah, didn't really get on with Def Jam Icon at all, have to say. Another fantastic cover. Got a bit of foil on it. I always said about the foil ones. Loved the foil ones. Dishonored. Disney Infinity have got a base and a few figures. It's something I'm very intrigued into trying at some point. Haven't got round to it. Say that a lot. Divinity... And what is that? Ego Draconis, I think that says there. Again, haven't got around to that one. We've got Devil May Cry. We all know about Devil May Cry as well. And then again, another bit of a collection filler at some point. Picked up for real cheap. I think it was 99p in game. Don Bradman Cricket. And then we've got the Dragon Age games. A series again, which I need to get stuck into. Dragon Age 2. Over here, Dragon Age Inquisition. Dragon Age Origins. 
and then we've got Dragon's Dogma next to it. Again, that's, this is supposed to be a really good game. There's another one that I need to get around to playing. And then we've got the Ill-Fated Took Forever, Duke Nukem Forever. And then we've got some Dynasty Warriors here too. Dynasty Warriors 7, Dynasty Warriors 8. Picked up them for not a lot, as I did with Dynasty Warriors Gundam. I chose that one to face forward because what, you know, Dynasty Warrior game with rather large robots. How fun is that? And then we've got a Dynasty Warriors game that I know nothing about, which I need to learn about. Dynasty Warriors Strike Force. That was picked up for Cheap and CX as well. Eats Lead. The Return of Matt Hazard. This was picked up cheap in CEX. In fact, I've forgotten to take the like, cycling label off there. Look at that. I believe it parodies several other games in it. Apparently, it's supposed to be a little bit of a hidden gem. It's also part of the Back and Pat program, so I can actually stream that. Uh, Enchanted Arms, that's an only on Xbox 360, as stated at the top. I think it's a very in-depth RPG. Don't know a lot about that one. This is the one that's worth looking out for. This one holds a little bit of value, especially this limited edition. And I was fortunate enough to pick it up in game for just 99p. And then we've got a Quake game. We've got Quake Wars Enemy Territory. Enslaved Odyssey to the West. This one gets a lot of praise. And I'm, again, guilty of not yet playing this as well. This is back and pat, so I can stream this one too. And then the Formula One games. I've got 2010, 2011, and 2013. So... I'm missing 12 and 14. 14 is the pricey one that's worth looking out for. It holds a little bit of value. It's also the only one that's back on Pat. I think those factors help in it as well. That one is actually a complete edition to that one. So uh, next up, fifth one, Race Stars. This is a lot of fun. I've got the Valencia Street Circuit exclusive edition. I have played this. The code for that is in there. I've yet to try the code as well. I really need to try that code. See if it works. A lot of fun. It is literally what you expect from seeing on the cover. It's Mario Kart with sort of car character... Uh, Formula One drivers. Uh, Fable 2, the only Fable game that I have on the 360, another only on Xbox 360. Falling Skies, you can pick this up for a quid in CEX, or well, I did anyway back a few months ago. Apparently it's on a TV series. I've never played this game still, and I have never seen the TV show. I had to actually learn what it was when I picked up the game. No explanation needed here. We've got Fallout 3, but we do have Fallout, another one of these DLC things, Fallout 3. Game add-on pack just turned up in CEX and, and I had to buy it just because DLC on disc. There's not many of them for the 360, but I find them quite an interesting and unique piece. So here we've got Far Cry 2. Over there we've got Far Cry 4. And in the middle we've got Far Cry 3. And I absolutely adore Far Cry 3. It is an absolutely fantastic game. I put God knows how many hours into this. Ridiculous amount of hours into this Next up, we've got two Fear games. Now, I did actually go to buy all three at the same time, but CX couldn't find the Fear 3 disc, so I left that day with Fear and Fear 2. Project Origin, that's the words. And, again, I love horror, so why haven't I played this yet? I do not know. Okay, here we go with the Fifas. We've got seven. Ronnie on the front with Wayne. Nine. Same combo. Ten. Much different combo. I'm knocking games down everywhere here. Can I do it without sending Far Cry 3 to the floor? Again, we'll leave it like that for now. So we've got 10 and 13. Now, I did have 11 and 12 once upon a time, but they were in the days that I used to trade FIFAs in and just get rid of them as soon as I'm done with them, basically. So do need to fill all these out again. And I remember keeping 13 because I really liked it. For me, this was when FIFA was last really good for me on the 360. But I have added a couple since, so as we scan across here and go down to one section that hasn't got anything facing forward, we've got FIFA 15, Hazard and Messi on that one, 16, Henderson and Messi on that one, and this is where they start to get a little bit pricey on the 360, and they're well worth looking out for. FIFA 17, they did actually go up to 18 and 19. Also got FIFA Street, I need to try that out because it's actually a little bit different. Found this on eBay randomly one day, really, really didn't know about this, and when I saw it, I had to have it. Tekken, what is it, Tag Tournament, Soul Calibur 5, and Tekken 6 all in one box, I believe, Fighting Edition. Nice little piece to look out for, that. Appreciate the Final Fantasy games. Not the biggest fan of them, though. They're just not for me. That is all it is. Got nothing against them. That's 13. Uh, flat Out Ultimate Carnage, if I can get it out. Stuck to the other one for some reason. Let's have an old sticky label on the front. Flat Out Ultimate Carnage. This is basically if... What? What we're talking? Burnout. 
had uh, a baby with um, Need for Speed, really. So fantastic little game. There's a great little side game where you can throw your driver into a wall and score points. Right, Forzas. The only Forza I haven't played on 360 is Forza Motorsport 2. Obviously, only on 360. Everybody knows that. So I've got three. I have played some of that. And obviously, we've got three with a Halo in a bundle box. I always see the bundles as sort of a separate release. So count them in the collection. Forza Motorsport 4. Played a ton of that one. That's a two disc of that one. Thought Crisis was going to fall on me there. Uh, Fracture. I picked this up because it was only quid in CX. And the guy saw me buying it and recommended it highly so much that this one will probably jump the backlog queue. Fuel is the bane of my collection in a way. Open world dr driving game, didn't really get into it. It kind of didn't really do it as well as many other games that are currently available. And the reason why I say it's a bane of my life is because the fuel is facing this way and not the other way like every other game. Okay, we've got a Game of Thrones game. And this isn't the Telltale game. It's actually a separate game. So that will be interesting to try. We've got Grand Theft Auto Liberty Cities, episode from Liberty Cities, Grand Theft Auto 4, and then Grand Theft Auto 5 as well, as well as Grand Theft auto san andreas this was part of that ebay deal with the borderlands dlc disc that i got and i would paid less than 20 quid i can't remember the exact price for the whole bundle and this game goes for around about 20 quid in cx alone because it's that well a little bit more uncommon it was only released under the classics label as well so this is definitely one to worth looking out for even if you've got it just to pick up for more trade value right grid two i do like the grid games so, yes, we've got Grid 2 there. Now, this section has all the Guitar Hero games. Now, I have all the Guitar Hero games that were made for the original guitar. And I say that because the only Guitar Hero game I'm missing is Guitar Hero Live, which had a completely different guitar, which you needed a dongle for, and had its obviously had its own game for that as well. So I'm, I'm missing that one. But as far as I'm concerned, I've got all the Guitar Hero games that I need for now. I will get the live one at some point because I want the full set. But I've got all the Guitar Hero games that go with that original guitar. Got two there. Obviously, two, Guitar Hero 2. And then my favourite one is Facing Forwards, Guitar Hero 3 Legends of Rock. I think that is the best of all of them. Guitar Hero 5, though, still a solid game. Guitar Hero Aerosmith is not a bad game. Guitar Hero Greatest Hits is a complete rip-off. This is the most uncommon one of the lot. Holds a little bit of value, so pick it up for that at least if you're only buying it for 50p or a pound. It trades in quite well at CX at time of recording. As I say, it's the dearest one of the lot. It's the most uncommon, and I'm guessing that is because it's a little bit of a rip-off, if you ask me. Basically, it is songs from all the other games before it. And even when you're scrolling through the track list, it has a little icon of what game it was off of. And to me, they didn't even pick some of the best games. Really sad. One of the franchises or one of the bands, which was definitely a good choice for them, Guitar Hero Metallica. And they've got Guitar Hero Warriors of Rock as well. I liked that one. Guitar Hero World Tour seems to be the most common one, I think. And then Guitar Hero Van Halen, which I didn't expect to enjoy as much as I did. They picked some great guest tracks on there, and it was just a well-structured Guitar Hero game. Of course, any collection is going to have Halos. Everyone knows about Halo, so I've got Halo 3. got Halo 3 ODST. Obviously, I had that in a bundle earlier as well. And also Halo 4. That is a bundle copy, so that needs upgrading at some point. Got a Harry Potter game. Haven't got around to playing that yet. Probably right at the back of the list. Not the biggest Harry Potter fan. Nothing against it, though. Heavy Fire Shattered Spear. This is an unusual one. Feels like an on-the-rails shooter, which you need a light gun for, but you don't have a light gun for. It is honestly an odd one. It's meant to be quite an easy completion, and I've got a whole chunk of game square out of it, but I just went to other games and haven't got back to it yet. Hitman, again, people know about Hitman. So, yeah, we've got Hitman, what, Blood Money, that one. Homefront, extremely Call cool of Duty-esque FPS, this one. The only thing that lets this down, it's not a bad game, actually. The only thing that really lets it go, it's such a short campaign. Honestly, it can be done in a night. It's, yeah, I think if you just play it on one of the easiest modes, it'll only take you sort of like three to four hours max. So, yeah, this is, a, again, another FPS that's a little bit unusual, only on Xbox 360, Hour, Hour of Victory. So when I saw it, I had to pick it up. I just love an unusual, cheap game. This one, I, I put this one forward. I just love the artwork on this. I know very, very little about it. But Hunting the Demons Forge. And then finally, just snuck there in the side there, Ill 2 Sturmovic Birds of Prey. 505 games, obviously flying game. So, yes, there we go. Looks more simulated than arcadey, that one. Next section, Infinite Discovery. It's holding on tightly, it's because there's quite a few uh, slipcases in this section. So, Infinite Discovery. I might 
after getting this one out, just leave it out. So we've got a little bit of room to play with in there. But yes, Infinite Discovery, another only on Xbox 360, one with heavy RPG elements. So I'm going to just check that one on the sofa for now. And then where are we? A bit disorientated. International Cricket, again, just saw it cheap and in good condition. They say you've got to have it at some point, so only 50p for that. Got Iron Man 2, I really still want Iron Man 1. So kind of waiting to get the first Iron Man game and play that before I play the second one. And then we've got Avatar, the game, James Cameron Avatar, not the Easy 1000 G1. Juice 2, Hot Import Nights, very fun racer, really enjoyed that one. And of course, another franchise people know a lot about, Just Cause, and I've only got Just Cause 2 in physical form at the moment. Kane and Lynch Games, got both of them, not played them yet. So I've got the box sets or the limited edition there of Kane and Lynch Dead Men. I've also got Kane and Lynch Dog Days limited edition this is missing its slipcase is meant to have one sadly but i don't have it uh next up picks up the london game market for about about four or five quid this one just never heard of it nice contract don't know a lot about this one but it does look a lot of fun looks like a hack and slash kind of game uh next up the underappreciated apparently i've still not got to play it la noir this is the complete edition this has got all four discs in it so if you are going to buy this game i'd suggest trying to hunt this one down and it's not expensive as well so yes la noir the complete edition got that that turned up in a charity shop in my local town i think for either 199 or 299 my memory evades me there two great games that need no explanation we've got left for dead there and then we've got one holding up two fingers because it is Left 4 Dead 2. Another game that turned up in a bulk lot I bought on Spock was Legendary. Again, I hadn't heard of it. Hopefully it's like its title and a really good game. I don't know. Now we're hitting some Lego. We've got plenty of Lego. The first Lego Batman, which I've played, completely got the full 1000G. I've started the second and not got to third, but I own the third. Got the second digitally still. Got Lego Dimensions, was gifted to me. However, I don't have any of the gear to play it, but when I do, I've got the game, so I can just pick up the pieces, hopefully separately for quite cheap. Both the Harry Potter games, years one to four and years five to six. And I've played the first D&D, not played the second one yet, but I do have the second one yet. Turned up in a... Lots at an auction house of all places, that one. And then Lego Marvels. I love the cover work for this one. This one is just beautiful. I really do. Just love that. I really, really do. So that one was facing fours at once upon a time, but I like to mix it up every now and again. More Lego games. We have Star Wars, the original trilogy. We have Star Wars 3, the Clone Wars, is that? Yes. And the classic version needs to be upgraded at some point. Bought part of a Facebook Marketplace deal, Lego Lord of the Rings. <laughs> franchise a lot of people know obviously smutty humor leisure suit larry box office bust uh, obligatory sports title that needs to be bought at some point i believe there's two tour de france games not entirely sure that and if there's not there's two variants of this one not quite sure but yeah i was only bought for like 99p i think from game when they had the sale on lollipop chainsaw absolutely looking forward to playing this one but i'm saving it for when i get to the half a million i'm going to use this game to hit that barrier i'm at around nearly at 408,000 at the moment so you will be played very soon another obligatory olympics game there we go We've got london 2012 I had this for ages because i know it's an easy completion but because i've never watched the tv series i haven't really been sort of over overwhelmed enough to really want to play it soon so really should do because the completion is easy so i will get around to that however i think it's in the wrong box i think that's in the original xbox box uh lost planet 2 as well people know about that i'd like to get the first one first before i play or play the first one first and also mafia 2 which i'm understanding is very grand theft auto-esque okay back along that row back along that row and we'll go down to row four We've got some Marvel on the go. We've got Marvel Ultimate Alliance. This is one to look out for as well. Holds its value really well. Marvel vs. Capcom 3, Fate of Two Worlds. Absolutely adore that game. Really do. Fantastic beat-em-up. It's just a shame that Infinite went the way it did and wasn't really that good. Mass Effects. Now, I started playing these, but I got into the first one, and I said got into it. I only mean that in playing it. I couldn't get into it, which was the real problem. So I kind of stopped and then switched to Dead Space and loved Dead Space. So, But I will go back to them. I will give them another chance because I do want to play through them, but it's just hard to at the moment. But yeah, so I've got all three. I've got Mass Effect 2 and Mass Effect 3 as well. And then we've got Max Payne 3. And I actually upgraded this recently because the one I had was a bit battered in the box. 
and the disc flap in the middle is broken. So this one stores the second disc by having a disc flap in the middle. It's one of the only boxes that I know that does that. So yes, Max Payne 3. Two Medal of Honor games. We've got Medal of Honor and we've got the Tier 1 edition of it too. And then we've got Medal of Honor Airborne. Oh, we've got three of them. We've got Medal of Honor Warfighter as well there. So everyone knows about Medal of Honor. So we've got those. We've got Metal Gear Rising there. That's certainly an interesting game that I can't wait to play. Another franchise people know a lot about we've got is Metro 2033. That one turns up all the time. Game bought from CX for Gamer Score because apparently it's an easy completion. Haven't got round to it yet though. I think I only paid about four quid for this. So Men in Black Alien Crisis is one for all the achievement hunters out there. Midnight Club Los Angeles. What a fantastic open world driving game this is. Highly recommend it. Haven't got round to it yet, but I might play this one soon. Again, because it's easy gamer score. It's easy 1000G. I hear it's quite fun too. That turned up in a recent Facebook Marketplace deal. Other easy completions include Monopoly games. I played some of these online digitally, and I've lost track of which ones I have actually played. So not sure if i got to that one he's a bunking system and find out gifted to me by friends you know going for the full set you're going to get all sorts of game we've got monster high a new goal in the school next to that we've got what is more effectively known as mk9 and to me this is now my favorite more combat game i really i do like 10 and i think 11 is better than 10 as well but this one here that's effectively known as nine i absolutely love it and then another obligatory sports title there i think this was only bought for a quid some of these later MotoGP ones do hold a tiny bit of value, and I only mean that by just a little bit more than a couple of quid. But we've got MotoGP 0910. I haven't played that well. I haven't played that well. I haven't played that yet. Uh, next up, Motorcycle Club. Just a random find on eBay. It was like £1.50 with free postage, so I just nabbed it. Or was it not a lot of postage? Anyway, it was like less than two quid all in, I think. So Motorcycle Club, yeah, just never heard of it. And I saw it, and I was like, well, I've got to have that. And the same actually applies to mud as well I, I paid about fiver for this in cx just again one of those games i haven't seen around and out in the wild so just thought i'd snag it there and then f fim is that motocross world championship yeah it looks a lot of fun uh dirt bike or quad bike they're racing maybe both that's a dirt bike on the front but anyway next up yes everybody's favorite game here look this is the one to look out for this is the rarest i believe standard release on the xbox 360 cex now sell this i think for 62 quid when i bought this back at the london gaming market they had 50 quid on it and i ummed and heard about it because of what game it was and i thought it's only going to go one way from there cx's value when i bought it was 55 so they were selling it under anyway and i bought it as part of a deal and this one was then marked down in that deal by eight quid so i paid 42 pound for it which is a lot but it's nice to have the so-called big hitter or the most expensive one of the standard releases for the 360 crossed off and that is what this one here is uh next up this just looks interesting by the cover i only paid two or three quid for it only on xbox 360 n399 nights and then facing forward is nba jam because I just love a bit of nba jam this is a full retail release with 1000 g it's nothing like the original games that were released i have played the on fire edition from the xbox live arcade and of course i played the originals from the mega drive days and so on but i haven't got around to playing this version yet but it's nice to just have another nba jam game with a, with a full batch of achievements next week is nba live 07 i did have 06 once upon a time but that's before the days of keeping it and that was an easy 960 the last achievement in 06 you couldn't actually get because you needed the online service which were then shut down so it's probably a whole bulk bulk get of nba live 07 as well which probably won't be difficult but again server shutdown probably means i won't be able to get them all Part of a small eBay lot bought, I bought once. I got NCIS based on the TV series. So hopefully that's an easy completion as well. A lot of TV tie-ins generally tend to be. So we've got a whole host of Need for Speed games now coming up. We've got Need for Speed Carbon. I think this is meant to have a slipcase. Haven't got around to trying this Need for Speed yet. Uh, that's collector's edition. So obviously I'd like to upgrade that at some point. Need for Speed Most Wanted. This is the most valuable of the Need for Speed games. Still holding its value well to this day. It's a very easily achievable 1000G, but you will need to put about 40 hours into it, which is what I did. Probably my favourite Need for Speed Most Wanted or Need for Speed game on the 360 just. And I say just because I haven't got Hot Pursuit, but it just edges it for me just. I think I just like the older style. Need for Speed Pro Street, unfortunately for me, it just seemed like it try to go a bit forza ish and didn't really deliver so i didn't really like this one so much haven't got around to try need for speed rivals yet and the same goes for need for speed shift as well 
Next up, Need for Speed The Run. This is a good Need for Speed game. I really enjoyed this one. Just let down by a very random QTE events between driving sections. Really does spoil it. It's a real shame that. And then I've got Need for Speed Undercover as well. I have started to play this one. I'm not really invested too much time in it. This one is basically you are a cop hiding from the sort of under underworld street racing and taking part in it. So a bit of a twist there on the uh, on the Need for Speed sort of storylines of the past. So that's all right. I haven't, really should really return to that one. Never Dead. I love the cover of this one. I've had this one facing forward before. I, yeah, I've got I've got to give that a bash at some point. I really have. And then we've got some NHL games which I haven't got round to. We've got NHL 07 by EA Sports, and then we've got 2K's offering in 2k7 uh ninja blade this is an only on xbox game i do believe yes it is there's the square at the top i haven't got around trying this one as well again meant to be a very good game as is ninja gaiden 2 that's an only on xbox 360 as well you'll see by the top don't really need to know go go into depth about in ninja gaiden games i made a city of gangsters no idea what this is about just drawn to it by the slipcase but it's a side on slipcase rather than a top one this is bought in the deal at the london gaming market as well so yeah that was not a lot of money in, as part of that deal because he chopped a little bit off of it. Next up, we have Operation Flashpoint Dragon Rising. Picked up in a charity shop for not a lot. And, of course, we've got Operation Flashpoint Red River 2. Or just Red River. It's not a sequel. It hasn't got the number in it. Over G Fighters. Over G Fighters. Uh, another flight game. Is it a simulation or is it more action? Looks a, li looks a little bit of both there, actually. But yeah, that wasn't bought for a lot. Very thick manual, and that weighs quite a lot. Overlord, there's a backwards compatible Xbox 360 game for you. Another beat em up which I have got round to trying. Again, it's very similar art style to the Continuum Shift or the Blaze Blue games. Yeah, it's alright. It's not as bad as the Blaze Blues, I would say. I enjoyed it a little bit more, but it doesn't really scream out to me. Pac-Man and the Ghostly Adventures, this was a bargain at 99p in game when they had that sale and they were selling off all their 360 stuff. Very pleased to pick up that. This one holds its value, as does the second one. So definitely a good one to look out for. Next up, we've got is Painkiller. Everything's in there. It's got like a, a CD, a music CD in it. It's got stickers. It's got artwork. It's got posters and all that. However, I've since learned that it meant to have a slipcase. And Game probably threw it away because although it was an old game, they actually sold it as new because it had one of their brand new labels on it. I think I paid four ninety nine for it just because everything was in there. Okay, Perfect Dark Zero. This has got a slipcase on it, but sadly, a little bit of label damage there means that I kind of need a new slipcase for it, which I don't know if I'm going to be able to get to or get around to getting one. Project Gotham Racing 3 and Project Gotham Racing 4. Played a ton of these. These are both fantastic games. Again, we've got a game that a lot of people will know things about, uh, more educated than me, Fantasy Star Universe. And then we've got a section without anything facing forward because obviously there's a lot of pro evos in this section and they're not highly interesting. Pirates of the Caribbean at World's Ends meant to be an easy completion. I've had this for years and just haven't got around to playing it. So maybe I should get around to that and whip the 1000G out of that double quick. Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare. Obviously everyone knows a lot about plants and zombies. As do they about Porter games and I've just got the second one. Again, picked this up for 99p in that game end of, end of generation sale or whatever they called it where they were selling more for 99p. Another game that turns out everywhere for 50p, Prey. Obviously, the release on the Xbox One is, is much better and apparently is, is, a, is a better game than this. But apparently, I don't know this. I've heard some people say good things about it. Some people say bad things about it. So I'll have to make my own opinion on that one. Okay, so we've got Pro Evos. We've got six of Adriano on the front. Totally overpowered in that game, by the way. We've got eight. We've got nine. Messi, he appears on a lot of these. There's Messi with Torres on 10. Missing 11. Got 12 with Ron on the front. Got 13, also with Ron on the front. Got 14 with nobody on the front. Missing 15 and 16. I've got 17. And there is an 18 as well, which is the one to look out for because that holds a little bit of value, but not as much value as the last FIFA, which is FIFA 19, which goes to 38 quid. Right, got Prototype and Prototype 2 in a slipcase. I saw that pop up on eBay, and as soon as I saw it was a slipcase, I had to have it. Again, I only paid probably about £2 all in delivered for that, so that was a nice steal. And it's got a little bit shiny going on the front, and of course, as we've already learned, I like a bit of shiny. Pure Football, Steven Gerrard on. Picked this up for like 20p in a charity shop. So, different football game that I haven't got around to try. And Quake 4, yes, I have got the bonus disc in there as well. So, that is something to look out for if you're going to buy Quake 4, because that disc doesn't come on the spindle. It normally comes in a separate paper sleeve 
in the manual section however mine didn't but was in there and squashed onto the spindle i have sorted that out race driver grid again love the grid games and then one that i need to get around trying because i just bought it because it was quirky and a little bit different and it's an early on xbox race pro so yes second to last row we're coming to now so we're scan back along this and the mess that i've made of this row too and there we go and down to some r's and here we've got rage but i've got the anarchy edition i believe i've got the normal edition tucked away in a box somewhere else i only put one of each game out unless it's gears of war raven squad this i've, I've noticed this gone up a little bit it's about a couple of quid but i'm not saying that because i bought it for 50p a long long time ago i've got resident evil 5 gold edition i do have the standard edition as well but because i've got the gold that's why that one's there and of course it's got uh we've got uh, chris and jill on the front there so i thought that was nice to have that one facing outwards rather than just one of these, which like Resident Evil 6, which just has a number. I've also got Raccoon City. I think that's in the wrong box because it's not a classics, but yet it's in a grey box. That was bought up in my Spock deal, or bought in my Spock deal. London Game Market, recent purchase. Basically 250 because I picked up two games with £3 each and said we're doing both for a fiver. So there we go, got that. The uh, One of the worst games ever. Always makes these worst game ever, ever lists if you ever watch them. Ride to Hell, Retribution. Yes, fully close sex scenes, the lot in it. Apparently it is awful, buggy, and broken. Ridge Racer Unbounded. Doesn't play as much like a traditional Ridge Racer game, if you ask me, but still a very good game at that. Plays a little bit more like a Need for Speed, to be honest with you. Risen 2, special edition, bought a London Gamer Market once upon a time. It's like a pirate open world game. There is a Risen as well, but it's totally different. Not pirate themed from what I know, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Please don't quote me... Uh, next up, Rise of the Argonauts. This looks very much like an RPG type game, but I haven't played it. And according to the good people of Xbox 360 Magazine, it's a must buy. Uh, next up, we've got Rise of the Tomb Raider. That's why it's not with the T's. It's got the word Rise above it. Uh, Rugby Challenge 2. Again, just a sports title because you need them all at some point. Oh dear. Shame on me. Rumble Roses Double X, only on Xbox 360. Yeah, yeah, there's no way of hiding this. You, if you buy this game, you know, you're, you're a bit of a perv if you just. You know, want it for any other reason than going in the collection. In, in, in the collection, and, and yeah, that's why I bought it. Awkward, right? Ruse or r.u.s.e was part of a deal, part of a deal on eBay. This one was so yes. Uh, not got around to playing though, so I can't offer a lot about it. But uh, obviously, very war style game. Sacred Three, so isometric hack and slash, first edition. Played it briefly, was enjoying it. Just got sidetracked into playing something else. Haven't got the first Saints Row game, so I'm waiting to get that before I get tucked into Saints Row 2, which also needs a box upgrade. And then we've got Saints Row 3 as well, which is or Saints Row the third, which is very wacky as we all know. Samurai Warriors, again, game last generation sale, 99 pence that one. Had to have that for that little money. And then we've got the first Saw game, and I'm a big fan of the Saw franchise. People know that if they know me. Absolutely adore the Saw games. So, yeah, this one is an easy completion as well. It's pretty much through playing through the game. Same can't be said for the second one, which I haven't got around to playing because I'm largely put off by the fact it has large amount of collectibles. And there's like three different lots of collectibles, and, of course, they have achievements for getting all of them. So it's kind of put me off a little bit. But... I'm less of a completionist nowadays than I used to be, so I really should crack on with that just because of how much I love the Saw franchise, favourite movie franchise for me personally. Obligatory Superbike games. I've played some of these, and these are actually quite fun. These are actually quite fun. We've got SBA, SBK08, which I have played, and SBKX, which stands for 2010. Yes, probably should be alphabetized after 11 because it's X and not a number, but it's 2010, so I want them in sequential order of years. And we've got 2011, which I haven't got around to trying yet. Secret Service. This is supposed to be quite a good game. Got a lot of negative achievements for zero G in it. So, yeah, meant to be a good game. I, I Even though I haven't played it, I'm still going to say to people, pick it up if you see it for nothing because it does get a lot of good mentions. Right, Sega Mega Drive Ultimate Collection. Simply a must for Sega Mega Drive fans, you know, who own a 360, quite simple. Obviously, there's collections of Sega Mega Drive games on all systems, but there's your definitive one for the 360, if you ask me. Cracking game. Still holds its value quite well today. We've got a Sega Rally game. It's a good rally game, don't get me wrong, but it almost takes advantage of the fact they are Sega and making a rally game and sort of have that recognition towards the old game. It's kind of more simulated, but still is a bit arcade. It's somewhere in the middle. It's still quite a good game. 
I paid about four. Oh no, I did pay four quid for this about a year ago. I don't know how it's holding up for value nowadays. Sega Superstars Tennis. It's exactly like the Mario Tennis, but with Sega characters. Lots of fun side games on that one as well. That is that is very cheap nowadays, and I, I just recommend picking it up for a, for a quick blast, a good blast, or playing a few co-op fun tennis games with friends every now and again. It's probably the only other tennis game as such that I've really enjoyed for a long period of time. We'll get to the other ones in a minute. Singularity recommended this to me. I paid about £1.50 for this in CX. It's got a lot of to do with time shifting in it as well. A game that holds its value really well is all the skate games, really. I've only got Skate 3. It needs a bit of a box replacement, I've noticed there now. But um, I'm just terrible at these games. I've got nothing against these. I quite like them. I'm just terrible at them. So I find it hard to want to play them because I'm that bad. Obligatory um, got Skylanders Imaginate this game. It was in a charity shop for not a lot of money. It might have been like 33p because it's part three for pounds. I needed a filler. But I've got it. I've got a few Skylanders. Just need to get a base. And again, I want to get achievement in every game. So unfortunately, I've got to play them at some point point sleeping dogs this is basically grand theft auto set in hong kong it's an absolutely fantastic game it's a shame we never got some kind of sequel it really is just that good probably got put aside by people because they were just buying grand theft auto and playing that and probably preferred that but it is a, a real i don't want to say hidden gem because it's well known about but it just doesn't get the love it deserves another tennis game but i haven't got around to playing this one smash Ball tennis 3 that was a 50p in cex this was part of a bulk deal, I think. I can't remember where, but Sniper Ghost Warrior. Obviously, people know about Sniper Games. This was one, another one of those random games I'd never really heard of, and it was only a quid in CEX, so I had to buy it. Soldier of Fortune Payback. Sonic Generations Lenticular Cover. The funny thing about this is I had this game, and then I saw it in CEX with a lenticular cover, and I bought it for the lenticular cover and traded it back in so I could have the lenticular cover on my copy. Yes, that bad. But it's a beautiful one as well. It's a really nice lenticular cover. And it's a very good Sonic game as well. It is one of the good ones. I know we all know about Sonic 06 and things like that, but that is one of the good ones. It really is. Soul Calibur 4. Love how Yoda's there just chilling on the front. Fantastic. Lep. Great franchise, love Soul Calibur. I have five digits Lee. I have it as part of that fighting pack that I showed you earlier. Just need to pick up another copy of five to have in the digital uh, physical collection. South Park, Sick of Truth. P jokes a minute in this one. Very RPG element if I could pick it up off the floor. So yeah, that's a, that's a bestseller one. All right, no, that's not a, not needed as an upgrade. That is an original box. Spec Ops The Line. Another FPS, I say, the 360 really is full of them. Spider-Man games hold their value really well. I've yet to get around to playing this one, Spider-Man Friend or Foe. And then we've got next to it Splathouse. Loved the Splathouse games, and I had to have this. Absolutely had to have this. So I got it. I also got it gifted to me as well. I've got it in two box. I say box variants. The one I bought was in a red box, and it looked absolutely awesome in a red box. But uh, my OCD just had to have green boxes on the shelf. So I've kept the red box in a box under my bed with other duplicates and put the green one on the shelf. Next up, bought off eBay for not a lot. Holds its value very well. So I recommend looking out for SpongeBob SquarePants game. This is SpongeBob Hero Pants. Again, they tend to be easy completions as well. This game is absolutely adored by a good friend of mine from across the pond, Lakota08, otherwise known as Raven, and she plays a ton of it. Got the, she's got the full 1000G again. This kind of fits under the skate category of me liking these games but not very good at it, so I bought it off her recommendation. Star Ocean, The Last Hope. This is like a three-disc game. It's a very long, in-depth RPG from what I understand. So it's going to be hard for me to want to get into that. I don't know, just something about it is not overly appealing to me. And the same can be said for Star Trek Legacy. Picked up recently in a charity shop for 50p, which is well undervalued for what it is, even though it's only like a four or five pound game. Uh, yeah, I just don't know when I get around to playing this, but I say I will at some point, because I want to get achievement out of every single game possible. Star Wars, The Clone Wars. This was another 99p from game in that last generation sale. These, I love these because they look so, so knockoff. But Summer Athletics... That was picked up with Donnie recently, just because I hadn't seen this one around too much. This is the one that I see around a lot more. This is only a 50p game, I think. Summer Flex 2009. They also do the winter ones as well. Recent case upgrade I had for Superman Returns. Mine was in bad condition box-wise, so I upgraded it when I found it again for 50p in a cherry shop and got good trade-in for it as well. This one does hold good trade-in. Always going to have Street Fighter games, so Super Street Fighter 4 is one I've had for a very, very long time. And then we've got another sports title, but it's one of Rockstar's very first games, E's Table Tennis. And again, it's supposed to be very, very good. Okay, 
more beat em ups because we all know I love beat em ups. Tekken 6, and this is an absolutely stonking game as well. So, highly recommend. Ugh, do I need to recommend a Tekken game? I really do. They're all good. Just buy all of them if you haven't got them. Tenchu Z, very stealth like ninja game. It's supposed to be very good. Been wanting to play it for a long while and still needing to want to play it. Test Drive Unlimited, I have played. Superb open world game. This should come with a map, by the way. I do have the map in there. And yeah, just a superb open world game. I had a lot of fun with it. With the short amount of time I played with it, I put a couple of hours into it. Got about 150G out of it, but really enjoyed it. So at some point, I will look forward to playing Test Drive 2 as well, Unlimited. Again, back to Spider-Man games. Hold the value really well, so always look out for them. Got the amazing Spider-Man, had it for ages. And then I picked this up in CX recently because it was only a quid as well. A Narnia game, Prince Caspian. Chronicles of Riddick was part of a Spock deal. Again, it's like 41 games for 50 quid. So only pays slightly over a pound for that. The Club, which I've heard isn't meant to be that great. This is a 50p game as well. Beautiful lenticular cover time again. The Darkness 2. Absolutely love this one. This was probably my favourite until the Sonic Generations one got discovered, but it is a beautiful slipcase. And then the game I bought from CX for about four quid, I think, just because it's in absolutely mint condition. Everything about it is. And when I when they took it out, the manual and the disc again, it's like it was bought and never played. So now we're moving on to the final row of what has been an extremely long video. Really sorry, but we've got 410 games to go through. There are a lot. So very, very last row and to the ground floor. Movie tie-in game that's very cheap, supposed to be rather an easy completion of the Golden Compass. A Marvel game that I'm actually looking forward to playing, to playing, but haven't got round to yet, The Incredible Hulk. That is King of Fighters 13, and that's a deluxe edition. It's got the bonus music disc in there, it's got the poster in there, it's got everything in there. So when I saw it in Cash Concepts for 99p, I couldn't snatch it off the shelf quick enough. Another game that gets highly recommended to me, which is near the front end of the queue of the backlog, is The Saboteur. I really must get round to playing that. This was one of the very first games I bought when I got my 360. I put a little bit of time into it and then got sidetracked by playing other stuff. And still since, what, 2010? or I need to return to it. I really do. But it's actually a really fun game as well. And I love how all the Simpsons games were released on many systems and each one of them has a different sort of cartoon image on the front like Holmes doing something different or there's another character in there with him as well honestly really good okay next up Smurfs 2 bought for gamer score it was it's actually quite a fun platformer there's a couple of little tricky bits but overall it's not a difficult completion as well Thrillville off the rails I'm hoping that is a basically a theme park kind of game because I do like theme parks so hopefully Thrillville is that was a recent 50p charity shop purchase obligatory Tiger Woods games got 08 sorry that's 07 but we do have 08 as well and then behind that is the only TNA game I believe in existence on the 360 or was it the only one they made cross platforms as well? TNA Impact. So apparently it's meant to be quite a good wrestling game as well. Offers something a little bit different for you. Okay, more Tomb Raider games. There's nothing in front of these. So these are classified under T. And uh, we have Tomb Raider. This is a, uh, an Explorer edition, allegedly, apparently. And um, we've got Tomb Raider Underworld as well, which needs upgrading. That was a cherry shot 50p buy. Again, I count these as separate releases. However, I don't actually own any of these singly. The compilation there of Ghost Recon and Ghost Recon 2. And the ironic thing about this is when I bought it from CEX, it actually worked out cheaper than buying the two games separately, which I thought was kind of odd. But we've got more Tom Clancy. There's Tom Clancy's everywhere in everybody's collection. We've got End War. We have got Rainbow Six there, Vegas 2. And we also have Tom Clancy's Splint Cell Double Agent. Tennis games. Again, I don't really enjoy them too much. So when they're not Sega All-Stars Tennis or whatever it was called, or Virtua Tennis, I can't really be that over you know can't really get that hyped to play them so top spin three and we've got four i believe the earlier they are the easier they are to get some achievements out of so i will get through them at some point transformers game there do love a bit of transformers so i'm not really a big fan of the michael bay films but certainly animated series and a computer game can't be that bad so transformers dark of the moon and then this turned up with a nice foily silver uh, slipcase so i had to have that uh, got a physical copy of Tron. I do have it digitally because it's part of games with gold once. Another one of those random cheap games that turn up for like 50p or a pound in CEX. So I had just, a, again, love a, love a random cheap odd game. So I had to buy that. Turok. Yeah, Turok game on the 360. And we've got two U-Draw games. We've got Pictionary Ultimate Edition and we've got 
uh, the instant artist one and i do have the ujol tablet i bought it all as part of a deal together just haven't got around to playing it ultimate action pack there's a couple of these and i've got ultimate action there's ultimate stealth triple pack as well that's got just cause two in it sleeping dogs and tomb raider I, yes we have already seen these in this video separately but uh, I see compilations as a separate release, so that is why it is in the collection as well. Under Defeat HD, another shooter, which is, from what I understand, is, is more isometric than side-on or top-down. But uh, I haven't got around to play it, so I'm just, just literally quoting words which I heard only a couple of days ago. But yeah, if it's a shmup, I really should get around to playing it. I do like the shmup. They're good for a quick blast. Unreal Tournament, this was picked up for like 99p as well. Obviously, we've got something to do with Gears of War on there. I believe it's by the same people that developed the original trilogy. And apparently, the mechanics are very similar. In fact, when I first saw it, I actually thought that was Marcus Phoenix on the front, but it, uh, or, or Dominic Santiago. But it's not. It's uh, almost like a hybrid between the two characters looking at it. But yes, it, the engine is very much Gears of War-esque, so I really should get around to playing it. Another cheap random game which turned up in CX about a year ago. Like I only paid a couple of quid for it, Vampire Rain. I think the cover on that looks sort of like very, very... Sort of old school, drawn on a spectrum case for that one, ironically. Uh, next section, getting near the end. Next section, Vanquish with a lenticular cover. Very nice. Velvet Assassin, again falls under that random category. I've only paid about a quid for that. Gifted to me by a friend is Viking. That has a slip case as well, variation. So I'll be look, keeping an eye out for that as a replacement at some point. And then tennis games that I really do like. There's not many of them, but the virtual tennis games to me are brilliant. So we've got virtual tennis 2009, and then we've got virtual tennis 3 as well. Very true to the franchise they are. Uh, again, a compilation, Viva Pinata, Forza Motorport Sport 2. So I count as a separate release. Uh, we've got Viva Pinata, Trouble in Paradise as well. And then we're going on to Wanted Weapons of Fate, which was bought in a charity shop again for not an awful lot. And I think the same there applies to Space Space Marine, Warhammer 40,000 Space Marine. That's why it's down there, because it begins with Warhammer. And I do class it as Warhammer first in the title. Warriors Orochi 3. Again, we've got Watch Dogs as well. That one you can pick up for, for a pound or so. The next two games both fascinated me when I saw them. I was never aware that there was a Watchman game. I love the film or films and I was never aware there was a game. So when I saw this and it was four quid in a cash converters, had to have it or three ninety nine to be precise, had to have it. It was the same as what CEX would have charged. Everything was in there as well. Had to have it. Really we really need to get around to that one. And again, I just saw this in CX and I was just like, Oh, I love the artwork. That's just really nice. Have to have that. Why the samurai just sounds good as well. This is a little bit of a hidden gem as well. This is only like a quid. It's um Sort of a badass woman with dual pistols and a katana on her back, as you can see in there. And you can slow time down, run off walls and all that sort of stuff. Put, I haven't completed it, but I've probably got about half. I put a lot of time into it again, just sidetracked by other stuff. Really good game. Do actually recommend it. Do have been enjoying it. Need to get back to it. Uh, bought for game score ages ago for only a quid. And it is not that difficult at all. Gets very grindy and repetitive, sadly. That's one thing that lets it down. Got a Wolfenstein game on 360 there. Literally just says a Wolfenstein on that one. Love this little picture, all this artwork of the geezer. You know, the skull there behind it. Love that indeed. World Rally Championship 2. These World Rally Championship games tend to hold value a little bit well as well. Let me shuffle along the floor a bit more as we come to the last of the... 360 games that aren't connects because I have to connect separately. But World Rally Championship 4, that one's worth looking out for as well. A few of the the um wrestling games, WWE 12, People's Edition. As I say, I saw that and they had everything laid out on, in their photo. This is on eBay. Like the card in it and everything, manual disc, everything was lovely. So I had to have it because honestly, I only paid like one pound something and about one pound fifty delivery, so it weren't an awful lot. Again, this is picked up for like 99p as well. 2k14 there with includes the ultimate warrior. It's got the DLC paperwork in there, but where it works is still yet to be tested. Another wrestling game that is WWE, and this one is all stars. Characteristics in this, the cartoony characters in this are, are well over OTT, but it's absolutely fantastic. A couple of obligatory ones, Smackdown Raw 2009, 2010. Uh, we've also got the Xbox Live Arcade disc in there as well. That's nothing as well to buy. XCOM Enemy Unknown, we all know about XCOM games. 
an X-Men game that I just had to have because it was X-Men and it's always intrigued me. I think I've only paid like three quid for that in CEX. And the game gets a little bit of stick, but um, it's almost, if it wasn't tagged as a Ninja Gaiden game, then it would be a little bit more revered, perhaps. But Special Edition, the comic is in there. It's quite funny how that turned out because it's missing to start with. Then I bought a disc-only copy of it in the same store about two weeks later and was able to nick the comic from that and then put the disc or then give the disc away to a friend. But if it wasn't a Ninja Garden game, I almost feel like that Ninja Garden Z would actually be a little bit, you say, a little bit more revered. But yeah, it's uh, sort of Ninja Garden with zombies, uh, isometric and a lot of jumping off walls and, and swinging off stuff. Yeah, very good. Okay, so that's all the um, games that aren't Kinect because I've separated my Kinect games. Basically, you know, the, the purple boxes, I just thought it'd be nice to separate the Kinect games, basically. And if I want to play a Kinect game, then I haven't got to sort of look all amongst the other stuff. So, got Dance Central, Dance Central 2. There is a third one, I haven't got it. Got Dance Evolution, which someone has said to me is actually better than the Dance Centrals. Uh, Dr. Kawashima's Body and Brain Exercise. I want to get fit, EA Active 2. And then we've got Fighters Uncaged as well, which isn't meant to be that great. And, of course, if you're going for them all, you've got to get all sorts of dancing games. So we've got da Just Dance Disney Party. I look forward to getting my groove onto a bit of Bare Necessities, perhaps. Connect Adventures, which is everywhere. Connect Disneyland, which sounds fascinating. I haven't got round to. Connect to Moles, which was gifted to me. Connect Joyride, which, surprisingly enough to me, I thought would be a 50p game. But it's actually holding a little bit of value to it in the fact that it goes for three quid CEX. But if you hunt the charity shops down, you will come across it eventually for a lot less. So I would advise doing that. Sesame Street Season 1, Connect Sports and Connect Sports 2, which I actually really, really like. Absolutely love them. Play loads of those. Star Wars Connect. So yes, that's got the dodgy dancing to hand solo song on it. Michael Phelps pushed the limits. Not a bad completion this one on this one, but uh, if you're going to do it in a night, make sure you're uh, well uh, fed and got plenty of energy and, and don't mind swinging your arms around a lot. Not a great game, to be honest with you. Michael Jackson, the experience. Haven't got the Black Eyed Peas experience, but I've got the Michael Jackson one. Motion sports play for real. Need to get round to that if I like Connect Sports. I really do. Still sealed, but it will be opened. I don't keep games sealed forever. My Body Coach 3. Apparently that's a little bit more of a... A rarer one to find as advised by a friend. So I had to nab it when he said it was a good price. Rabbit's Invasion, the interactive TV show. Must get around to trying that. Same applies for this because I like horror horror games. And an interactive horror game with a Kinect sounds like a load of fun and right up my street. Recommended by a good friend of mine, the Gunstringer as well. Sadly missing a manual, so I need to upgrade that at some point. UFC Trainer as well. There's going to be a lot of exercising games with the Kinect, isn't there? U-Star 2 in the movies. There was a U-Star that wasn't around when the connect was around or was around when the connect wasn't around so it required a webcam attachment add-on so they basically made a u-star 2 which just requires a connect and that's what that is you can imagine the achievements on that can't be that difficult so really get into it and then finally number 410 your shape fitness involved now i knew that was going to be a long one i didn't realize it'd be over an hour though but i'd rather do that than do it in one hit and as we, we pan back as i say i've got two of these units side by side i will need a third one in the future at some point but for now i'm probably future proof for about a year i can always sort of put two bookends on the roof and then make that sort of an extension to the collection while i try and find or be able to afford a third one of these but having them front out like that makes it look pretty even though basically i've got enough games spine out to fill one now but uh, obviously i bought two to future proof for a while and i say having the covers outwards you know front cover artwork needs to be appreciated so much it really does but ladies and gentlemen that is my collection of 410 xbox 360 games i'll do this again in a year's time i don't know how i'll do the video but i'll do it again in a year's time because this has taken a long time to do but i've thoroughly enjoyed doing it so i hope i've uh, recommended a few games to you brought your attention to something you didn't know or you just had a lot of fun looking through these with me as i say i've had fun going through them that it's flown by for me doing that so so yes ladies and gentlemen thank you very much for watching if there's anything that i'm missing that i need to sort of focus on getting a lot quicker then please do bung it in the comments say oh why haven't you got this get it i am very much looking out for dodon patchy that is the shooter that i was missing that i think i forgot to mention but yeah absolutely fantastic love the 360 love my collection and one day i will i'm determined to own that full set and have an achievement from every game if that is possible so ladies and gentlemen i think this just leaves me to say thank you very much indeed for watching if you, especially if you made it all the way through to the end well done thank you very much for watching indeed and as always take care